Welcome to week two. I hope the first week was exciting for you and informative. All we talked about was the canonization of the New Testament, which is how and why we got the 27 books that we did. Uh, I really enjoy early Christianity. I mean, it's why I ended up getting a PhD in early Christianity and New Testament. But uh, I always found that stuff fascinating. And some of you may be wondering, you know, what does this have to do with ministry? Well, I think uh, it's, if, you're, if you're in Christian ministry and you're trying to do this uh, Bible studies and whatnot in your Sunday school classes, there tend to be a big gap between what you learn in seminary and what you do in church. Uh, I do try to bridge that gap. I am an ordained Baptist minister, so I understand the difficulties of trying to translate that information. Uh, but how we got the Bible is important, especially the historical uh, ways that we got it. So I hope that's been helpful for you uh, and inform some of the Bible studies that you do uh, in your churches. Uh, this week, we're going to turn from the canonization of the New Testament and start looking at the letters of the New Testament. This whole first uh, half of this semester will be devoted to the letters, uh, and that's kind of how I'm organizing this class. So <clears throat> most of the letters came early and first, so that's why we're doing it in kind of chronological uh, order. Uh, we'll go from the earliest letters uh, and to some of the later letters. And then the second half of this course, we'll pay attention to the Gospels. Uh, and then finally, at the very end, we'll spend about two weeks on the Revelation and some of the apocalyptic literature. It's been fun to read some of your responses about the heresy or the coming, the second coming of Christ and the rapture. Uh, we'll spend two weeks solid on uh, the Revelation and uh, the more eschatological apocalyptic literature in the New Testament towards the end of this semester. Uh, but now we're going to spend this the, the majority of the first half of this semester on the letters. And Paul's letters are important. Uh, he, he wrote more letters than anybody else in the New Testament. There's more books of the New Testament attributed to him than any other author. Uh, so he is a very important figure. It might sound odd doing a New Testament class and starting with Paul because Jesus is the central figure of the New Testament. Uh, or, uh, the early Jesus movement was all about uh, Jesus uh, and who Jesus was in the life of this uh, growing community. Um, but Jesus didn't write anything. Uh, Paul was one of the first ones to start writing things down. And he and James, uh, I, I argue that James is early. Uh, he, that James wrote his letter early. And I think he and Paul were writing against each other in a lot of ways. So we'll kind of unpack that uh, this uh, the next couple of weeks. Uh, but today, uh, this lecture, I just want to give you an idea of where we're going um, in this course, starting with the letters of the New Testament. Um, this week, we'll talk about Galatians and the letter of James in particular and read those over against each other. Um, but as the movement grew, uh, and by the way, it's been a lot of fun to see you guys respond to the idea of the early Christianity as a movement, and that's absolutely what it was. Uh, because it had no organizational structure. It started with Jesus of Nazareth teaching, um, and, and it grew from that. And it really was a movement for uh, the first century, for sure. Uh, but as that movement grew, uh, and things started being written down, and things started being circulated, and things started being used as authoritative scriptures, uh, there became a lot, there were a lot of questions, and some of the earliest questions uh, were, had to do with Jesus' second coming. Uh, in particular, 1 Thessalonians is a response to a real question in that church, and that church was wondering, what happens when people in our congregation start to die before Jesus returns? Because they all anticipated Christ to return before they died. That's how imminent the second coming was. Well, some of them started to die and Jesus hadn't returned. So they were wondering what was happening, what was going to happen to that person. Well, Paul's letter to First Thessalonians, Paul's letter to Thessalonians, which is First Thessalonians, directly addresses that question. So that's one of the, the, the early crises in the early Jesus movement was the delay. And Jesus' coming, or his parousia, which is a Greek word. 
Uh, so that was one of the first letters ever written was addressed to that question. The second letter, uh, or maybe not the second, but one of the other early letters was Galatians. And Galatians is another letter trying to clarify some things. Mainly because after Jesus dies and he's resurrected and ascends into heaven, who's in charge? He didn't leave any kind of information about what that was going to look like. So when he ascends into heaven, there's all these believers who have to figure all this stuff out. And they have a lot of questions and they don't have a new, the New Testament's not written at all. So they don't have authoritative scriptures to go back to, uh, and they have to really build the plane as they fly it. Uh, so early Christianity is a, is a real raw movement based on Jesus' teachings and his life and, and the things that he did. Uh, but these folks were really um, trying to figure it out as they lived their lives. So some of these early issues that arose are, are the nature of these letters. Galatians, in particular, addresses a specific question. Uh, as, as this early Jesus movement grew, it began to intersect with Gentiles. Jesus was Jewish. All of his disciples were Jewish. All of his early followers were Jewish. It was a Jewish movement. And it didn't become Christianity until later. But as that Jewish movement grew beyond the borders of Judea into the Greco-Roman world, specifically with Paul, who was an itinerant minister, always moving from one place to the next, starting a church here, moving there, starting another church, or going to another church to preach his gospel. As the early Jesus movement grew and it encountered Gentiles, Paul had a burning issue about how do you incorporate Gentiles, non-Jews, into this Jewish Jesus movement. And Galatians addresses that. Uh, I'll wait later uh, to talk about Galatians in particular. But that was one of the main reasons Paul wrote Galatians, because he didn't feel like Gentiles had to follow certain Jewish laws. In other words, Paul didn't think Gentiles had to obey the Bible, the Bible that they had, which was the Old Testament, our Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. He didn't think they had to be circumcised. He didn't think they had to obey food laws. Now, Paul never made this exception for Jews. Uh, Galatians is written to churches in Galatia, um, but it was predominantly Gentile, and he didn't feel like they had to become Jewish to believe in Jesus. Now, James, on the other hand, is much more conservative. Paul represents a very liberal understanding of identity, where Jewish identity uh, isn't the nexus for belief in Jesus. I think James and the other leaders of the Jerusalem church uh, didn't believe that. Uh, the letter of James is very, the, the identity structure that that letter creates is very stringent uh, and it's very Jewish. So that question of identity, who are we and, and what does that look like for early Christianity is a critical issue. How do you incorporate Gentiles into a Jewish movement? Uh, do Gentiles have to obey all the laws that Jews have always had to obey in order to be a follower of Jesus? Uh, and this is no small issue in the early Jesus movement. So two primary uh, issues that the early Jesus movement faced was what happens when Jesus doesn't come back? And how, what do we do with Gentiles? The, the issue of the, of the Gentile question. And... Um, the first one is certainly a pastoral one, but the second one becomes an issue that uh, early Christians and early Jesus followers dealt with for centuries, the identity of early Christian movement. What was it going to be? Was it, was it a Jewish movement for Jewish people? Was it a Jewish movement for all people? 
And do, what does this Jew, Jewish movement look like as it grows beyond the borders of Judea? Uh, that's, that's, it's in that crucible that most, if not all, the New Testament is written. Uh, next lecture, we'll deal with Galatians in particular. Uh, when, I'm sorry. The next lecture, we'll talk about Paul uh, and who he was and what he did uh, and his adventures and missionary journeys around the Greco-Roman world and how he tried to be an ambassador for this new thing that was happening, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, and then the next lecture, we'll deal with Galatians in particular.